Rav, you have to be the first person <laughs> I want to talk to about this, given that you are a former police officer and still in touch with so many of your colleagues. What do you think? It's, it is a really, really hard question to answer. I think the bottom line, in, in all honesty, is no. Um, we, we're not going to see all police officers armed, and I think mostly that's a, a logistic problem. Yeah. Because they are, trust me, so overstretched at the moment, more than people would ever believe. And to try and take officers away for, even the ones that wanted to, it, away for a six to nine week course minimum, plus regular training and um, certification every six weeks after that, to keep the, the firearms certificate, it's just going to be impossible. There is not enough officers to be able to cover whilst they're away doing the course. So, logistically, I can't see it ever working. And also, a lot of officers don't want that responsibility. They don't sign up for that. At the moment, they don't, no. And, and although a large number do want that protection and, and that the firearm would offer them, a lot don't want to have the responsibility of carrying one and possibly having to use it. And we've seen some success, haven't we, since our gun control laws were tightened up after the Dunblane mm -hmm. massacre uh, mm -hmm. in the 90s, that gun crime on the whole has slowly gone down over that time. Yeah, I mean, it's still there, yes. but statistically it does appear to be going down. But there's also other threats I mean, that, that a firearms unit would be very helpful for. For example, if someone's out... We, we had situations when I was in the police where someone was going out and about with a crossbow or someone had an axe and was going out. Mm. We would call a firearms unit for something like that. So even though it's not put down statistically as a firearms incident, mm. you would still need the backup of a firearms unit. And I was very lucky because I was in an area where we did have a permanent firearms unit on our patch. Yeah. So, like you just mentioned there, there are other places in the UK that aren't so lucky and would have to call people in from, from miles away to come and do that. And if someone is coming at you with a weapon that's not a gun, like, a, like you say, a knife or an mm. axe or anything else, mm. a crossbow, there are other ways to incapacitate them. For t tasers, for example. Yeah, and, and the... Now, they hadn't come in when I left the police, but obviously I do speak to a lot of my colleagues or former colleagues uh, about that, and they, are, are, by and large, are very impressed with the taser, that's one thing they do like. Um, not necessarily having to use it, but the threat of having it stops a lot of confrontation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very positive thing. But just, I, I want to go back to, to what you touched on here. So we're all talking about PC Palmer here, who, who died, and, and he was unarmed. I was talking to a firearms officer last night, and we were both saying the same thing, that even if he was armed, Unfortunately, it's almost certainly going to be the same end result because mm -hmm. he had literally a couple of seconds from that person running around the gates, which, while they were open, is another discussion, but running around the gates towards him, a desperate man sprinting at speed will cover a lot of ground in two seconds. They could cover 15 metres quite easily. Mm -hmm. That fifth, Even if he was armed, he would have to assess the situation, he would have to give him a command to stop, he would have to draw his weapon, take an aim shot at a moving target, knowing there was hundreds of spectators mm -hmm. behind, or the other option of having the House of Parliament behind. Very difficult decision. That's from the officer's point of view, but mm -hmm. then you think, well, would this individual have run at an officer if they'd known they were armed in the first place? Maybe he'd seen what was going on there at the gates, seen that these officers weren't armed. And, of course, there are armed police mm -hmm. on the Westminster estate, although we seem to... We understand that it was a close protection officer of mm -hmm. the Defence mm -hmm. Secretary, Michael Fallon, who actually mm -hmm. uh, killed this, uh, this individual. Look, David, I want to put this point to you, and it's a quote of a, of a US uh, police chief that's often brought out when people talk about arming police officers here. They said if a New York police officer spent a week in London, within a week they would be in prison because they'd be so used to using their gun. If a London police officer spent a week in New York, within a week they'd be dead because of the difference in gun crime and using guns. Yeah. Do we really want to go down no, the route don't. of being like America? I mean, my personal feeling is that I think it fundamentally changes the dynamic of the policing. And I think, you know, we should be incredibly proud of the police in this country because, actually, they... they I have many friends who are police officers and they, they kind of walk this very difficult tightrope where you're in a community situation where you're trying to engage with the public and diffuse situations a great deal of the time and then you're in these very rare events where you've got terrorist attacks and so on. So,
I think the thing, the minute you arm police, you change the dynamic. So when I lived in Los Angeles, mm. you've got armed police, mm. you completely feel very different about the police officer. You certainly wouldn't go and ask for directions from them, mm. uh, which you would do in this country. Um, I certainly don't think you could train them all. You'd have to make sure they were revalid revalidated the whole time. That mm. would be incredibly expensive to do. And fundamentally, it doesn't change the terror threat mm. in any yeah. way. So yeah. I don't think it works. And, you know, look, knee-jerk reactions in any way yeah, to this uh, yeah. are obviously not wise. Jamelia, though, would, yeah. would you feel safer if all of our police officers had guns on them? In all honesty, no. Um, I completely understand the reaction of, um, of certain members of the public believing that we should have more armed police. I think one thing we need to pay attention to is the fact that the response was actually phenomenal. Even though uh, we lost the life of one of the officers, the response of the police was fantastic. The armed police did get involved and defused it, well, you know, got rid of the threat. For me, though, as a black woman, I feel that one of my fears is that I... I watching what's happened in America, I feel that there is racial bias within the police and I'd, I wouldn't feel comfortable or confident with the police running around with guns. There's already a disproportionate amount of black men dying in custody mm. and I'd be very worried that they'd become trigger happy mm. on the streets and, you know, I just think it would take... Uh, you know, you, you, you say, like, training and stuff, but can you train out of someone's mi mindset racial bias? And that exists. We can't deny the fact that it does exist and that's what scares me mo more than anything else. You're absolutely right. It was after the McPherson <coughs> inquiry following mm -hmm. the death of Stephen Lawrence that the police, the Metropolitan Police, was called institutionally racist. Yeah. They're obviously still trying to work through that. Mm -hmm. I think in America it is completely different. Absolutely. And the fact is that American police mm -hmm. are armed. And yeah. look, let's just get some figures out there. In England and Wales in the 12 months to March 2016, British police discharged their firearms on just seven occasions. That's mm -hmm. the highest since 2009. Wow. By contrast, 613 people have been killed by US yeah. police in 2016 up to last summer. Do we really want that here? Not That's what the panel thinks. After the break, it's your... Do feel free to comment and give us a thumbs up if you feel inclined. For more clips from the show and exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, click here. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button here to be automatically informed when new videos are available. Links to our other social media platforms can be found in the description. Thanks for watching.